Like Tommy Burleson, David Thompson also came from a small western North Carolina high school. Well, where I lived, there were a lot of guys that would come out to recreation centers and uh, just uh, backdoor baskets and play. You know, we played just about every day. That, that was about the only occurrence around that area. Um, we, there weren't that much baseball or uh, football during the time. And uh, we would call up all our friends around the neighborhood and get together to play ball all day. And an all-day game might well be in the front yard of Mr. and Mrs. Valley Thompson of Shelby. With 10 older brothers and sisters around, there was never a lack of competition for David. The old basket has been moved down now for the younger neighbors, but there are proud memories. Miss Thompson, what was David like when he was growing up? Yeah. Was just a little bit. Well, he always was a good boy. He, he liked to play basketball when he always had loved to play. When he was little, little, he always had loved to play basketball. He always had liked to go to church. And he always sung on the junior chorus in church. I'll tell you, David just, uh, I don't know, he just, it's just something about him, you know. I can't explain what make, you know, the people like him, you know. He just armor. David is armor. That's one reason, you know, the people like him, so. You were in Raleigh last weekend when the accident occurred. What was your feeling about the response from other people about David's well-being? Everybody I know of, all over in Shelby, high and all around Crest, they was, they was pulling for him, you know. And it was uh, some man, Bob, running the jewel box, I can't think his name. That boy said he cried for a solid hour. And they all was praying for him, you know. That is, this lady what worked at the, in the library at Shelby, she said they, they had a solid prayer in church for him. Glistening in the Thompson living room are the trophies and plaques and awards won by their famous youngest child. It's a point of great pride in the Valley Thompson home. Out of the fiber industries plant where Mr. Thompson works, he used a break with Bob Taylor to recall his younger days with David. Did you ever go out in the backyard and play ball with David? Well, I, I went out there when he was shooting by himself sometime, and I'd, I'd get the ball and throw it up, and when I'd throw it up to shoot, I'd miss something like that. He said, Daddy, that ain't right. So, so let me show you how to throw it up. And he'd give it kind of a, something like that. And so I'd try it like that, maybe, maybe hit one out of five or something like that. Where did he learn to play basketball so well? Well, he mostly learned, and uh, he would, he had him a goal up in the backyard down the field. And so he'd go down there every day and shoot but by himself most of the time. And a lot of times his friends come down, he'd shoot with them. And a lot of times they would tell, he'd tell me, he said, that he's going to be a star someday. There's no ch change in my life, only I have, you know, a great feeling, you know, because they would have made many friends, and we have met many friends, and, and seem like everybody loves him, and they uh, respect us. That seems to be an attitude that David really tries to get across, how much he loves other people. That's right. Has that always been true, David? Yes, that, that's been true. He always, uh, he had a boy that he uh, usually stayed around with, and he, he didn't have a father, and he always want, he wanted to do something for him. And, and I, I always thought that was a good attitude. When you say David Thompson is from Shelby, it's best to quickly add, and Crest High School. It was here that David first attracted national attention as an exceptional performer under coach Ed Peter. Only one defeat his final season and a retired jersey number. David is just a tremendous individual. Uh, I've known him since he was in the ninth grade and I never run across a young man that just influenced people as much as he influences people in a shy but uh, very 
aggressive type uh, personality, yet he, he doesn't really, he's not really that outspoken. David, uh, the first year or so he was here, his freshman, sophomore year, we, uh, we were just struggling to have a good basketball team, but his junior year and senior year, he became the leader in an unassuming way, but uh, yet he was a le leader, and uh, these young men that were played with him just picked up, the, picked up his key and followed suit. And David's first year at the school was also the first year the school was open. What effect do you think those four years that David had here have had on this school and its operation? Well, first, it's definitely made uh, Crest High School be known over the country. But uh, other than that, uh, I think the fact that David was such a tremendous athlete and still is, uh, Crest High School basketball has, uh, has been uh, great basketball in our mind because uh, the young men here uh, want to pattern themselves after David and, and be uh, good basketball players. And I think it's uh, his impact on uh, the integration here in, in, in our school and the integration in the county has, uh, has, has had a big effect because when we moved into the school, this was the first year of, of complete integration and we haven't had any problems to speak of. I think he's had an influence on this. Do you feel like these ball players have taught the state and maybe even the nation a lesson in uh, something a little bit deeper than maybe basketball? Well, if the state and the, and the nation hadn't taken a lesson from them, it's, it's, uh, it's not David and Tommy and Monty's fault. It's, it's the people. The new state had the big dominating center, and uh, I watched their freshman team play a lot. They had a lot of real good ball players like Steve Noose, Steve Mor Smorale, and uh, Steve Graham, some other good ball players, and I felt that uh, I could fit in with this group. I talked with the guys, and they seemed to have a, you know, a close companionship among themselves, and they seemed to love each other, same as my high school team, and I felt that it wouldn't be that much of an adjustment for me to just come right in. Why is that important to you, the, the, the team aspect, the love aspect of the, of the team? Well, I think uh, in order for a team to be su successful, uh, to uh, continue winning, they've uh, got to be for each other and respect each other's ability and uh, to love each other on the floor and off the floor. Spectacular is too dull a word to describe David Thompson. He's reached every height in college basketball. In both his varsity seasons, the soft-spoken but dynamic superstar led the rugged Atlantic Coast Conference in scoring. Both seasons, he was accorded All-America honors. His teammates look on him in complete awe at his incredible play. Through it all, Thompson remains a 100% team man, never reaching for the limelight, yet standing above his competition in dazzling fashion. But as he is honored and saluted as a performer, David is even more loved and adored as a person. That was never more evident than when David suffered a frightening fall in his, on his head against Pittsburgh in the NCAA Eastern Regionals at Raleigh. Listen now to David Thompson as he saw that near tragic happen. Well, I don't remember it too clearly. I remember um, on the opposite end of the court, I went up for a jump shot. And uh, I missed short, and they got the rebound and started down court. I kind of trailed the play, and I saw the guy break for the basket. And I took off from about somewhere in the vicinity of the foul line in an attempt to block the shot. And while I was up, up in the air, I hit one of my teammates, uh, I think it was Phil Spence. My foot caught on his back, and um, that's, that's all I remember. David was back on hand before the end to watch Tommy, Monty, and the rest of the pack demolish the Panthers. Views on the UCLA game in a moment. <laughs> 